Um, I was going to ask you about um, this weather we've been having. Oh, yeah, this weather. Let me tell yeah, you about yeah. the weather. Yeah, yeah. This weather we've been having mm-hmm. is, 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 is hot. Some, yeah. Sometimes. Some, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's a little uh, damp. Yeah. Sometimes it's it's a little chilly. Sometimes it's hot. The weather, weather, the, sometimes yeah. it's not. Sometimes it's not, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. I am sat with Justin. Hello, Justin. Hello, Ben. Hello. I'm, I'm Justin here. Hello. Now, Justin, how are you doing today? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've just found ourselves with a, an unexpected couple of hours. So we've come and decided to... Uh, do a recording for you. Chat, yeah. yeah, do a recording yeah. for you, lovely people. Mm. Um, I know I haven't done one of these in a while, but uh, I, I don't care. You're not the boss of me. Um, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Now, Justin, I want to get just get some things out of the way mm, sure. for a start. The first thing being, I know you are older than me. I am. By a year or so. So margin, yes. Yeah. But also, I'm technically your superior in terms of the business at which we work. Yes. How do you think that's going to affect the recording to come? Uh, I think that will be a very, very complex dynamic to be honest uh, I think basically you're afraid of me and I'm very much afraid of of you and and what you could do to my my long-term employment because to be honest this is my last chance to be uh, yeah so, well uh, yeah pick it up is what I'm saying so uh, we'd like to start right. today with a story and it's something that we've been sort of thinking about for a while. And it takes place in a very um, remote village. Well, I say it takes place in a remote village. It takes place just outside a remote village. Because the, the villagers... Estate. Yes, the, the villagers are, are a little too scared to go to the estate. If you go to any pub um, in, the, uh, in that village and you say, Oh, what about that big castle? What about that big manor on the hill? They'll say, Oh, we don't go there. Mm, we don't no. go there. And for good we reason. Know, we, we don't go into that there... Manor, they say. No, we don't go into the manor no. of one man by the name of Thaddeus Badley. Thaddeus Badley. So, uh, Justin, I mean, would you mind taking it away? Well, you may well ask, who is Thaddeus Badley and why are people so unnerved by him? Well, the story begins a very long time ago, toward the beginning of the 20th century, when uh, Cornelius... Badly, the peanut magnate, one of the first major roasters of, uh, and importers of, of peanuts into the UK, um, had uh, he'd, he'd, he'd set up his, his peanut factory, he'd, he'd started bagging them, started selling them, and, uh, and uh, he was making an absolute fork, because of course, peanuts, very delicious, very, very good snack. If, you ever, if you've never tried peanuts, then do... Do go into a pub or a supermarket, um, Aldi, Morrison's, uh, Asda, or, 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 or most pubs, and ask for a pack of peanuts, because you really, you won't regret it. You, they're a very, very tasty product, and, and of course people are just discovering that at this a point in history. So, <clears throat> Cornelius Badley, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd jumped on this, uh, this early, he'd seen the potential of peanuts, and he was making... An absolute mint. Uh, he wasn't making mints at that point, although subsequently the uh, the company has, has has diversified into sort of various peanut flavors, of, of which peppermint was a short and not entirely successful variation. But um, he'd it was just plain plain peanuts, dry roasted peanuts, um, just the usuals, and uh, he'd uh, he'd also. Uh, expanded his empire overseas by by uh, by marrying. Um, <clears throat> Anthea Crockleton, uh, a, uh, a the heir to a, to another enormous American peanut roaster. So, this was the, the proud empire, and, and for well, for two generations, it uh, it was the the biggest peanut uh, 
and porter and, 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 and roaster in, in all of the UK. Until young Thaddeus. Until the year... 1977, 1977, yes. Exactly. And what happened in 1977, Justin? 1977, well, in 1977, of course, uh, Cornelius long since died and the company was very successfully being run by uh, his grandson, Thaddeus, who uh, was big, uh, he sort of uh, reaches in his mid-30s, he was a young man full of vibrance, full of energy, full of new ideas. Vigour. Vigour, absolutely. Uh, You had sort of badly peanut butter, badly... You know, various peanut products, peanut syrups, peanut oil, everything peanuts, uh, peanuts comics, uh, all, all, all the peanuts. And uh, <clears throat> peanut allergies. Peanut allergies, yes, they're major, one of the, 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 the biggest exporters, uh, exporters of, peanut. of peanut allergies to um, sort of the, the Commonwealth. Um, yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, Thaddeus was doing very well. And then in 1997, uh, Unilever Food... No, no, 1977, uh, rather. Sorry, did, did, I say, did I say 1997? <laughs> he did, he did have a sorry. play. <laughs> How ridiculous. I know, 1997? Yeah. yeah. Good grief. 1977. Um, it's like I haven't told this story a thousand times, goodness. Um, was invented... Uh, certain snack, you might have seen it in the shops. Uh, it's very, very delicious. If you haven't seen it, um, you can get it at any supermarket, any pub. Um, it's uh, sort of if you um, Aldi, Morrison's, uh, Tesco. Uh, it's it's a pot noodle. Uh, the pot noodle. It's sort of uh, I don't know if you, if you haven't come across it. It's it's dry a pot of a, a sort of plastic pot. Yeah, like a yogurt pot. With dry noodles in, uh, and a flavour sachet. Um, often something like chicken and mushroom, beef stroganoff. Uh, paprika. There was a chow mein one. Right? There's probably I think it might might have been chow mein one, Ben. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've done all um, sorts of flavors over the years. So. Did all kinds of succulent flavors. Um, sort of a, a strawberry, mint, peppermint, of course. Um, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, but in this case, uh, sort of there are a few few basic flavors. And um, well, young Thaddeus. His head was turned. His head was turned. He he tried one day. He was in a big hurry. Grabbed, grabbed a pot noodle and thought, ah, just a simple pot noodle to which you have to uh, just add hot water. That sounds ideal for a, a man with my busy lifestyle. Yes. Peanut magnate. I'm on the go. Oh. I, don't have, I don't have time to, to prepare a, a large meal. No. I'll just <clears throat> pop some hot water in here and, and chug it down. Chug it down, yes. Yes, I, I, only need, I, can, I can have this in less than 30 seconds. You see, he wasn't a patient man, nor was he... Uh, a li- literate, literate man, literate actually. man yeah. yes yeah very unusual for a magnate of his stature but uh, he never had any patience for reading it wasn't that he was dyslexic or anything it was just that he never his his his, uh, his parents never really made him learn to read and uh, and so he added boiling hot water to his pot noodle quaffed it down just ooh ah, ah. ah. Crunch, 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 crunch of the of the, of the, the partially sort the of dry, yeah, yeah. The, the dry noodles. Fundamentally dry, because of course, uh, again, if you haven't had pot noodles before, you actually to prepare them properly, you need to uh, give the water time to soften the noodles to infuse them. But this and then stir it as well. It around, and sachet. No, he just pours in the boiling water and smashes <coughs> smashes the contents of the the, yes. the pot into his face. And of course. It was excruciating. It's boiling water. It's uh, boiling water and also very sharp sort of noodle fragments. Uh, and, uh, and there was a certain something inside Thaddeus through the pain. It felt something he'd never really felt before beyond the excruciating pain of scolding. And so them only being sort of pennies really in those days. Exactly. Uh, absolute pennies. He went out and he bought another one. Added boiling water, reboiled the kettle, of course, because it says they only use freshly boiling water. Reboiled the kettle. Ooh! Ah! Oh, very good. Ooh, yes! And do you know, he spent the rest of the week, he barely slept. He barely slept. And he spent, in that one week alone, he spent £30, pounds, which in, in, in 1977 was. In old lot. money. Old money, yep. <laughs> old money. Lot of yeah, it was a, a hell of a lot. A hell mm-hmm. of a lot. Could, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, that's um, a lot of money in those days. I spent a whole thirty pounds just quaffing noodle, quaffing noodle, quaffing noodle. He went into a board meeting the next day, the, the next week. 
pot noodles in hand, of course. And, and everybody saw the difference. He had big red mark blisters all down the front of his jaw from the boiling water, of course. So, uh, far, so fast forward now. Yeah, fast, fast forward. Fast forward to 2017. Yeah. 40 years later, he's now in his mid-70s. Mm-hmm. He lives um, by himself. Well. Well, say by himself. That will come to that in a moment. Yes. All kinds of, he lives by himself uh, in this estate, in this manor. Uh, uh, above this village, towering over it. The villagers, they're too scared to go and visit mm. him. They don't know what if he's even alive yeah, anymore. They don't, they he, don't know what, you know. Yes. But Ooh. there but there he sits in his dinner jacket with no pants or trousers. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, sort of fragments of fragments pot, of pot noodle. noodles staining, staining his shirt. Yeah. Flavour sachet is just he, disregarded on the floor. He calls out like to his carpet. butler. Yeah. He says, Simpkins! Says Simpkins! Yes, sir. Bring me another. Yes, sir. Chicken and mushroom, the usual. Yes, sir. And make sure the water is hot this time. Last time, it was tepid Simpkins. But, sir, it was just off the boil. I can't make it any hotter, otherwise it'll be steam. Well, if you can't make it any hotter, then I'm afraid I can't pay you any more, Simpkin. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll endeavour to do my best, sir. Boil the water in front of me, Simpkin. Yes, sir. I'll just put the kettle on. That it may be bubbling when I pour it into my mouth. Yes, my sir. My scalded mouth. Yes, sir. My crusted mouth. Yes, sir. My scabrous, ruined mouth. Yes, sir. I'll... Get on that right away. Bring me another to snack on in the meantime. Yes, sir. And so it goes. And so it goes. Over and over, day after day. And a couple of weeks later, his mm. his, his his daughter, mm. um, uh, Mary Badley, mm. um, who wants to take over the business, but he, he refuses to relinquish control. Yes. yes. She says, Father... You know what about our inheritance? What about what? Please, you know you're you're um you're ruining everything that that our our family our family fought for and our family um grafted for and and built up over the years. And he says, inheritance, inheritance, you grasping bitch, inheritance be damned. damned. <laughs> I would feast on pot noodles, and you may have whatever scraps are left. When finally the infection takes me. <laughs> and so she leaves once again disappointed. Little does she know, of course, that the inheritance was squandered long ago. Exactly. Long he's, been, ago. he's been living on payday loans, credit cards. Yeah, yeah everything he, he sold what on. He sold several of his organs. Yes, um, and Simpkins' organs. And Simpkins, his butler, he sold his organs. Um, Simpkins also coordinates um, heists on various mm-hmm. uh, articulated lorries filled with pot noodles. Full, yeah, he goes to, straight to the source. And yeah. he just goes straight to the source. He doesn't buy them from shops anymore, buys them wholesale, or he steals them from articulated lorries. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that's where we're at with Thaddeus Badley. Yeah, they think that the, the that that's actually a, a huge factor behind the, the success of Unilever, Unilever Foods. And the uh, decline of peanuts in pubs. Uh, yes, yeah, that's why it's mainly mainly sort of uh, posh crisps, uh, scratchings, and uh, trousers. Although if you've never tried pork scratchings, um, really delicious. Like, obviously if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, see if you can find a, a vegetarian or vegan substitute. But... Uh, if not, really, they're very crunchy, very strongly, very, very flavoursome. Lovely, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think we'll, we'll leave that story there then. Yeah. I don't believe that there is um, sort of fundamental uh, goodness in children. Um, yeah, children are bad. Yeah, I think, I think that's something we can... We can sort of agree on. I think it's the idea that children are sort of fundamentally. Why are there so many child murderers? Good. Well, exactly. You hear about child murderers. You hear about child predators. You know, all that kind of thing. If they were good, then that why would kids be happen, doing that? Obviously, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, you know, it's it it it's opt- It's just blind optimism in its purest form. I think, and uh, that's another thing. I don't I don't believe that um, uh, we are living in the best of all possible worlds. Um, I think that philosophically, that's 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 a duff, a duff, a duff, a duff, duff <laughs> hypothesis. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, duff. <laughs> Sorry, we uh, we uh, I should let you know we have colds. Yes, yeah, so we're very ill. Duff. <laughs> um, oof.
Hi, so I'm just with Justin again because, frankly, there's something we missed and we figured it is Halloween. So you've got a Halloween question for everyone out there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's just a, really, I suppose it's a question about how you'd react and, and, and you know, what, I'm interested in what thoughts this can provoke. So suppose you've, uh, you've arrived at the great pumpkin palace of uh, King Pumpus. He's the spooky king of Halloween. Um, he's uh, the, you, 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 the yeah. He's, he's the reigning the reigning king of all, of all the spooks of all Halloween. There in his pumpkin palace, you've you've journeyed down the river Styx through the through the s- skeleton sepulchres and the uh, the the ghastly graveyard. Uh, you've you've traversed the uh, the bogeyman bonanza. Um, you've 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 climbed the uh, the mountain of monsters uh, and 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 skied down the the slopes of uh, super spooky um, specters. Uh, you've uh, you've you've grappled with ghouls. Uh, you've jumped through an open grave. Um, you've, uh, you've 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 confronted the ghosts of of Ghost Manor. Uh, and uh, they've and, and bartered your passage through, and eventually you've arrived through all these trials and and tribulations uh, at Pumpkin Palace. Um, there you are approaching the great spooky throne, the bony th- the the bone the, thro- the throne of bones, the the, the bone. Thro- the bony throny bo the, the the bony throny bone, bone, throne, bone throne bone throne bone throne bone throne of of King Pompous. And there you are, and he's there. He's just a pumpkin, no arms or legs, just a pumpkin. Big, how big? Big, a a, a, a very large pumpkin, but not abnormally large. It'd be ridiculous. Just twice the size of someone's head. Yeah. Uh, twice the size of a of a skull. Really, uh, it's, it's how it's usually measured. There he is on his, his throne, of, his bony bone throne. Uh, he's wearing his crown. His crown's it's an incredible, regal, spooky crown with a, a gold skull on the front. Um, his, his, his supremacy over the skeletons. It's got the uh, the fingers of, of bogeymen around the around the around the perimeter to, to make up the sort of pointy bits of the crown. Uh, it's got it's got a big ghost. Uh, on top, it's got some strands of ghosts hanging off it uh, from his conquest of, of the spectres and the spooks and the, the morgue beings. And uh, so there you are, and you say, Lord Pompous, my liege, good sir, good, good sirrah. And you kneel before him and you say, I have, a, I have, I, I have a come all this long journey, my lord, to ask of thy secret, good sir. And King Pompous floats off his throne toward you and he says, Thou wouldst be no unto which my secret, good sir. And he you say, Aye, my lud, that I would I would learn unto which thy secret. And he looms over you, his, his shadow large and ominous, and he said, Truly, thou wouldst beget yonder secret. And you say, I, for I have bejourneyed all this way, sir. And then he looks at thee and he says, Very well, my secret, the spooky secret of all Halloween is this. Halloween, tis not the spookiest time of year. Christmas is the spookiest time of year! How would you react? How would you react? How would you react? And that's the question we're asking, really, isn't it? That's what, we're, that's what we want to know. How, how would you react? <laughs>